All right, today I want to take a look at modal verbs. As usual, I'm going to begin our discussion of modal verbs with an example in English before transitioning over to an example in German. The main point I want to stress is that uh, regular verbs simply report an action, whereas modal verbs add something extra to the whole equation. Uh, it reports on an attitude, ability, or a uh, characteristic of, of the verb itself, of the action. So we're going to be talking about that today. And then uh, we're going to look at actually how to insert a modal verb into a German sentence. This will require uh, knowledge of the uh, sentence bracket in German. Before closing with a look at all the modal verbs, their meanings, uh, and then also a subjunctive form of one of those modal verbs. Uh, we use that subjunctive form, möchten, uh, quite a bit to express what we would like. So, um, without further ado, let's take a look at modal verbs. So, uh, we have on the screen a simple sentence in English. He sleeps in the bed. Now, with the verb here, sleeps, uh, it simply reports the action of of the subject. We, uh, it doesn't explain whether he likes to sleep in the bed, where he ought to sleep in her bed, or even if he should sleep in the bed. Uh, it simply reports the action of the subject he sleeping in the bed. Now, by itself, it's kind of a boring sentence. It tells me what I need to know, but uh, in life, we want to know a lot more detail. So this is where modal verbs come in. Uh, Modal verbs report an attitude, an ability, or responsibility towards the verb. So he should sleep in the bed. doesn't mean that he is sleeping in the bed right now, but it means that sometime he should perhaps stop sleeping on the floor and move over to the bed where it's more comfortable. So it reports, this specific use of the modal verb reports a uh, perhaps a responsibility, a, uh, an indebtedness, or a requirement to sleep in the bed. Now, the same thing we can do in German. We had the same sentence, er schläft im Bett, he's sleeping in the bed. Now, again, it reports the same detail, or lack of detail, it simply reports the action. Um, by itself, maybe a little boring, but if I want to imply this need, this ought to, I'm going to have to use a modal verb. Now, when we use a modal verb in German, it requires us to uh, tweak the German syntax or the word order a bit. And this gets into your knowledge or prior knowledge of sentence bracketing. So, er schläft im Bett goes to, uh, well, we haven't got there quite yet, but what we want to do is I want to take schlafen or schläft, and I want to take it out of its second position, right behind the subject. And I want to take that and move it to the very end of the sentence and put schläft into its infinitive form, schlafen. Now this leaves a gap in the sort of middle uh, or second position of the sentence, and I want to fill that gap with the modal verb. So I want to drop sollen in, and I want to conjugate it so there's subject verb agreement. Third person singular form of the modal verb is soll. Er soll im Bett schlafen. He ought to sleep in the bed, or he should sleep in the bed. Now, this is how we form modal or use modals in German. Uh, it takes the second position, and in, in so doing, it kicks the verb out of its position to the end of the sentence and turns it into its infinitive form, or the form that you would find in the dictionary. Er soll schlafen. He should sleep. Now, we can do that with every single modal verb that there are. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Now, these are a list of the modal verbs, uh, of all the modal verbs in German. Dürfen means I may. Können means I can. Mögen means I like. Müssen means I must. Soll, I ought to. And wollen, I want to. Now, you'll notice that with the modal verbs, uh, in the first, second, and third person singular, or ich, du, er, sie, es, there is a stem change in the vowel of the verb. So dürfen goes to darf. So ü, umlaut, goes to e. Same thing of können, mögen, müssen, and wollen. Sollen, however, remains the same. Uh, you'll also notice that ich, darf, and er, sie, es, darf, uh, well, essentially, the first and third person forms, for first and third person singular forms of the modal verb are the absolute same. 
So if you know how to conjugate ich, you also know how to conjugate as he is. Um, now, these are all the modal verbs. They indicate, as I said, uh, action, responsibility, uh, attitude, uh, a feeling towards a specific verb, a, a specific action. Now, the final thing I want to look at is the subjunctive form of the verb, of the modal verb mögen, I like. Um, the subjunctive differs from the indicative. Indicative uh, is thus named because it indicates an action. Subjunctive, however, indicates a, uh, how should we say it, a type of uh, attitude or, or a, a possibility. Uh, for instance, ich mag, I like, ich möchte, I would like. Now, möchten, the subjunctive form of mögen, is used frequently when you uh, want to be polite, if you want to order something. Um, ich möchte ein Bier. I would like to have a beer. Uh, doesn't mean that I'm going to get it, but I would like to have it, and I'm, therefore I'm dependent upon your good graces to bring it to me. Uh, by using this adjunctive, you're sort of lowering yourself, putting yourself on another person's mercy, so to speak, and they will give this to you and thus be uh, polite. So, anyway, these are the uh, forms that we're going to be looking at right now. Later on when we look at subjunctive, we'll figure out how to make subjunctive forms of the other modal verbs, and actually every verb there is in German. So, the modal verb.